Welcome to The Body Nerd Show, empowering you with the super uncomplicated things you need to know about self-care and movement so that you too can wake up every day pain-free. I'm your host, Alexandra Ellis, and I'm a coach, writer, former yogi, kettlebell devotee, and 100% body nerd. So, are you ready? Let's get nerdy! Welcome back. You're listening to episode 32 of the Body Nerd Show. On today's episode, I'm sharing common causes of wrist pain and what you can do to fix it. We'll talk all about carpal tunnel syndrome and why surgery isn't always your best option, plus how getting stronger wrists can also help your neck and shoulders be a lot happier. But before we dive into that today, I just want to remind you that show notes, fun links, free downloads, the Body Nerds group, and all things live over at aewellness.com slash podcast. There, you're going to find links to my Instagram, where I post weekly body work fixes. I'm at holla for mala. You'll also find information on the Body Nerd Garage, which is actually this weekend. So you definitely want to check it out and don't want to miss it at all. It's a weekend of nerdiness here in Los Angeles where I'm going to teach you the latest techniques to help you get stronger and more flexible in both body and mind. It's really super fun. And if you have been struggling to build consistency and you need a plan to get you there, you need to get to the Body Nerd Garage because that's literally what we'll be doing. (laughs) Plus a lot of other stuff like masterclasses and breathing meditations, and it's going to be amazing. Enough of that. Come to the Body Nerd Garage. (laughs) You could also find over at aewellness.com slash podcast a link to the Body Freedom Self-Assessment. So this is a free quiz that based on your responses will guide you towards the best next step for you right now to get rid of tension, stiffness, soreness, and pain. So go check all that stuff out. And also, thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm really grateful that you're here because this wouldn't be possible without you. So let's get into it. Wrist pain. Ooh la la. Wrist pain is really a bummer. Um, And I love push-ups. I'm always working on my pull-ups. I think I can now bend my elbow a quarter of the way in a pull-up. So progress over perfection. And whenever I teach any moves in a class or a workshop that is guiding you towards a push-up, wrist pain always comes up. I see people rubbing their wrists. I see, you know, comments after class about wrist pain. And The thing is, all of our technology is getting lighter and smaller, right? It's not like the cell phones are getting bigger and laptops are getting heavier. Like everything is getting smaller and lighter. And the truth is we don't use our hands as much. I mean, even on a computer typing, that's nowhere near as much work if I was outside trying to do farming and trying is the operative word because I can't even keep succulents alive, (laughs) But I don't even flip light switches on in my living room anymore, thanks to my Google Assistant. And I'm sure you don't write things a lot because everything is typed. Or another level up is you just do the voice memos. They've even started taking jungle gyms out of schools because there's fear of injury. But also, who's using them? As a side note, do you remember the presidential fitness test when you were... I guess it was just an elementary school. And there was a couple different components and you would get a certificate at the end that you finished it. And it was the sit-up test and the mile run and this hanging test. I don't even know what to call it. Do you remember that? Because I just remember sitting on the playground. I always had PE in the afternoon. It was always hot. um, And nobody could do it except like the one kid in class who was super strong. And it's not even a pull-up. Literally, all you had to do was hang from the bar for more than I think like 10 seconds was what you had to do. And everybody, except for that one kid, would get up there and we would be like, all right, here, we're going to do it. And as a group, we'd all be like, okay, this is the person that we finally get to cheer for. And just boop, they would fall off. Every single time, nobody had any grip strength. And the other wild thing is that nobody was concerned. Nobody even cared that we couldn't even hang. If we had to hang and if we used our hands and arms, and this is even, you know, in the late 90s, if we had to use our hands and arms, we would be a lot stronger. And convenience is awesome. Like, I am not going to get rid of Alexa. I'm not going to get rid of my Google Assistant. I love Siri. I don't like having to order things myself, you know. But the real question is, at what cost? 
What are we willing to sacrifice as far as our body for convenience? And even in preparing my notes for this episode, I was realizing there's a lot of ways I'm trading convenience over an opportunity to build strength. So neck pain, wrist pain, carpal tunnel, elbow pain. It's no coincidence that these are becoming more and more common because our wrists are weaker and weaker. That's the thing. Wrist pain exists most of the time because your wrists are kind of weak. And that's definitely the ongoing story that I have in every episode is get stronger and that will solve everything. It won't solve everything, but honestly, it will solve a lot of things by getting stronger. So let's talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. The carpal tunnel is the anatomical name for this small tunnel that's in your wrist. It's made by the bones of your hand. They're called carpals, hence the name, and your flexor retinaculum. So the flexor retinaculum is this thick connective tissue that is on the palm of your hand, and it's very similar to plantar fascia that's on the bottoms of your feet. And you might have not heard of plantar fascia when it's inflamed. It's plantar fasciitis, and then you know about it. So the flexor retinaculum goes over the top. The carpals make the other border, and it's a very small area. That's 100% true. But the small area isn't the issue. It's not an issue of design, or we would have evolved to not have that problem. Now, inside the carpal tunnel is a bunch of important structures. So there's nine tendons of the flexor. So those are your grippers. If you try to grab anything or pick anything up, those are the flexor tendons and the median nerve. So the median nerve can be aggravated if there's any inflammation or overuse happening in any one of those nine flexor tendons. But the thing is, that's not always why it hurts. I've talked about this before, but a nerve can give a signal of pain anywhere, regardless of where it's getting pinged. So I remember a student back in the back in the day, like it was so long ago. I remember a student a while ago who came to me after already having multiple carpal tunnel surgeries, and she was still in pain because the carpal tunnel wasn't the problem cutting into her palms and wrists wasn't the solution because that nerve was being irritated somewhere else. The carpal tunnel size and the space being super small, like that's not the problem. The problem is that we're constantly loading our tissues and our body in a way that they're not quite ready for. We do this all the time. We walk maybe 4,000 steps a day and then we decide to go to Disneyland Or we go to Europe on a trip and we put 20,000 steps a day for two weeks straight and we wonder why our body is killing us and we get stress fractures and plantar fasciitis. Well, no duh, right? You weren't ready for it. Your body wasn't ready for it. And it's not quite as simple as just being like, well, mentally I'm ready for it. My tissue should be the same, right? No. Everything should be gradual and the best way to build strength gradually is with consistency. Now, here's another interesting side note about carpal tunnel syndrome. There's not a consensus on how to test for true carpal tunnel syndrome because pain alone isn't a positive marker. So if you have pain and you go to the doctor and they say you need surgery, smile and nod, and then go get a second opinion as soon as possible. Pain's not the only thing. Yes, true carpal tunnel syndrome, it's going to impact the nerve. You're going to see uh, changes in how the muscles of the hand work because of that impact onto the nerve. There can also be a wasting away of the thenar muscles. Those are your thumb muscles. Like those are all true signs of carpal tunnel syndrome. And there is lists of, you know, specific tests you can do, but pain is not the only marker. And pain is absolutely something that you can do something about. So this is why I always say, get stronger, get stronger. Now, before you run out and buy, you know, one of those squishy balls um, or even like a one pound weight to do wrist curls off the end of your desk, like, first of all, don't do wrist curls. If you're doing wrist curls, just stop because it's a waste of time. Because the best way to train your body to get stronger is to do things that mimic what you need your body to do, right? It seems like ground shattering and earth shattering, but it's not just Train your body how you want it to perform. The easiest way to get your wrists stronger is by hanging. Now, I'm not saying you're going to go out and do some pull, like, you know, 87 pull-ups on Venice Beach. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I told you, I'm still working on mine. I can get that quarter elbow bend. 
But getting your hands and your wrists and your forearms and your elbows and your shoulders and your neck coordinated enough to be able to withhold or to hold your body's weight is a fantastic thing. So a great place to start is hanging in doorways. And I'm not talking about the top of the doorway, literally just holding on to the side of your doorway, especially you have that molding around the door and just leaning away from it. And then just holding yourself there. Try for 10 seconds, try for 20, try for a minute. Just the act of putting and loading your hand, your wrist, your elbow, your shoulder with a little bit of the body's weight and then sustaining that, holding it for a while is going to strengthen your wrists. Yeah, getting to an overhead bar is a great place to go. I do have a very ugly pull-up bar in our basically living room hallway area. They're not pretty, but again, convenience at what cost? Style at what cost, right? I don't wear high heels because it doesn't feel good. But if I'm going out to a special event and I want to wear heels, I am going to wear heels because it's a conscious decision. (laughs) Do you see? I'm trying to justify the heels. But anyways, I do have an ugly pull-up bar and I strongly recommend that you go on Amazon and get yourself also an ugly pull-up bar and then hang from it. And again, it's not about doing a pull-up bar. It's literally just about a dead weight. Just hang from the bar. Start gradually. Have your feet on the ground and just start to gradually add some weight into the bar. Increase intensity by changing the type of bar that you're hanging from. So if you're always hanging from your pull-up bar, awesome, but try hanging from other stuff too. I was scrolling through Instagram and one of the accounts I came across had a spiral staircase in their house that was exposed. So each of the stairs was like hanging out. And so they were hanging from that, which is awesome because then that's more variability. So Before we go and, you know, change all of our houses and get the ugly pull-up bars, start by hanging in your doorway. That's a fantastic place to start. Also, pay attention to duration, right? How long you are holding yourself either in that shape or even an object. I've noticed that since I started taking this class at my gym and holding a dumbbell for usually about two minutes at a time, it's been great for my grip strength. The first class, I thought my hand was going to explode. It was so tired from holding the weight for so long. But now it's a lot easier. And now I'm able to gradually increase the strength. So be mindful as you build your strength in a very smart way. And as always, choose real life activities instead of, like I said, a squishy grippy thing. Um, I've even seen like these little, it's almost like a hula hoop or little rubber bands you put on every finger. And then you try to strengthen the hand that way. Doing real life activities is going to allow all of the tissues gradually get stronger together. And it'll also help to improve the coordination. That's why I really dislike those little wrist curls because they only ask one muscle to work. And realistically, when you go to pick something up, one muscle isn't firing. There's a whole host of coordinated things that have to happen. So it's better to train and move in a way that's more natural than it is to just try to boil it down to its essence. Katie Bowman, a fantastic biomechanist that you should absolutely go check out. She talks about this idea too, that spinach on its own is fantastic. But if we take all of the elements out of spinach, you know, the iron and vitamin K, is it? I'm, no, I'm not nutrition. But you know, all of the elements of spinach and you take a pill of each of those, it doesn't really replace all the other benefits of eating spinach, right? The act of chewing, seeing, tasting, the vitamin's not the same. So the same goes for your movement. The wrist curl is not the same as being able to hold the strength of your body either overhead from that ugly pull-up bar, which truly I love, um, or from a doorway. It's not the same thing. Another great way to build wrist strength and also get more steps in, you know how I feel about that, is to carry your groceries. So we live in an area where we're very fortunate to be close to the grocery store. We're about a mile away. And I have finally convinced my husband that even when we buy water, he likes this New Zealand artisanal water. I mean, I just basically drink tap water. And that's not true. It goes to the Brita filter. But still, My point is, we go to the grocery store, we buy these jugs of water, and we carry them home. It's so great for your grip strength, for your endurance, for how you're carrying it in your body to build strength in that more natural way than trying to boil it down into its essence. 
So yeah, we're weirdos and we have the time (laughs) to do things like that, but I really encourage you to think of ways that you can do something similar. Maybe it's parking farther away in the parking lot or carrying something in your hands instead of throwing it into your backpack or rolling cart or even the grocery bag. Just find ways to use your hands as they were designed beyond just texting, scrolling through Instagram, tapping your next podcast. That's not to say I don't do all of those things also, but it's great to have variability in your strength training. Now, what about braces? You might be like, but Alex, when I have wrist pain, shouldn't I wear a brace until the pain goes away? So in general, I'm not a huge fan of braces. They are fantastic to help with pain in the moment, but they're going to prevent you from using whatever area is braced normally. So if you have a wrist brace on, it's going to create compensation patterns. It's going to change how the muscles in your hand are working and strengthening and being coordinated with your whole body just by nature of immobilizing the joint. So the muscles start to weaken and okay, so you're not in pain anymore, but now your starting point for how much strength you have to build is like five steps back. So use a brace if you're in pain, but be mindful about it and understand that it's not the be all and end all. You know, maybe you just wear it at work and then at home you have your wrist out, your wrist out of the brace, but you know what I mean. Find a way to use it and find what is the minimum dose of wearing the brace that you can tolerate that gives you enough of that pain relief, but also gives you an opportunity to use and strengthen your hand normally. So there you have it about wrist pain. And the take-home message is carry your groceries and get a pull-up bar. Honestly, if you do those two things, uh, your hands and wrists are going to be a lot, a lot happier. And if you need some guidance about where to start and what that next step might look like for you, definitely check out the Body Freedom Assessment. So remember, that's at aewellness.com slash podcast. It's also in the show notes. Or send me a DM on any of the platforms. So here's to asking better questions, moving more, walking to the grocery store, (laughs) and getting nerdy. And if you enjoyed this week's episode, do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button and head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review. Not four-star, not three-star, just only five stars. (laughs) It helps other body nerds find the show. And it's just really awesome to hear all the ways in which you are improving and moving and feeling amazing because of what we talk about here. And I also want to hear your body nerd hack. So if you have a wrist issue that you're working through, or maybe you have a secret ninja trick about wrist strengthening that I've never even thought about, leave me a quick message on the body nerd hotline at 818-396-6501 and tell me what you do every day to feel amazing. And you can also come on over to Instagram. I'm at Hala Formala. I love IG stories. So tag me and let me know and show me how are you building wrist strength? I want to know. I love seeing body nerds being nerdy out in the world. And together, let's spread the word that your body is super cool and you can change the unchangeable. I'll talk to you next week. Listen, friend, we both know that you are not you when you're in pain, but the good news is you can change the unchangeable. Even if it seems like it's been forever, life without pain is 100% possible, and I can help you get there faster. Head on over to bodynerdshow.com and download the Body Freedom Assessment. You'll answer a few questions, and then you'll know exactly what your next steps towards more days of awesome should be. It doesn't have to be complicated and it won't even take you more than 15 minutes a day.